welcome to Brand X Review's ninth annual Halloween special for 2021. The last couple of videos we were talking about John Carpenter's The Thing, tying up some loose ends from last year's Halloween special. So this one's really going to kick things off. We're going to talk about the Maniac Cop trilogy. Now in last year's special we were talking about 80s horror films. This is kind of a continuation of that but it does spill over into the 90s. We're going to get into the gist of it but basically if you've not heard of these movies or maybe you've heard of them but don't really know too much about them because you've not seen them the gist of it is you've got three movies the first one came out in 1988 the second one came out in 1990 the third one came out in 92 the first film a bit more of a cult well a bit more of a memorable cult film than, than the other two maybe um although i, I liked all three but well, the first one is really the standout. You've got Bruce Campbell, Richard Roundtree, Tom Atkins, a few other people that you might recognise. Um, it's kind of a murder mystery suspense thriller with a bit of a paranormal angle that becomes a bit more apparent as the movie goes on. You've got this previous cop um, called Matt Cordell, who, as it turns out, was killed in prison. Um, you start to realise, did he ever actually die, um, or did he come back from the dead? Is, you know, how how is he back? You know, all this stuff kind of gets explained as the movie goes on. But um, that was the first one. The second one um, doesn't have Bruce Campbell in it. Well, it does, but not for not for too long. And um, it was the actor Robert Darvey, who you might recognise from films like The Goonies and Licence to Kill. He was in the second and third one. So anyway, I could carry on, but I'll just let the actual video conversation between myself and the core uh, pick this up from there. But pretty good trilogy anyway. Uh, give it a watch and uh, let's get into it. The Garth Please videos start with me saying, right, I think it's recording because this thing doesn't actually tell you straight away when it started. So it's just a shame. Yeah, it's not with me just going years. Exactly. Well, like every other video then. So yeah, Maniac Cop. Uh, three movies that were I think they started in the late 80s and kind of spilt into the 90s didn't they um, so yeah so we're going to talk about these today so do you want to have anything to say just to start with well I mean they, these are featuring me uh, Cordell the, the Maniac Core. Core. this is, is it... my film well, I did not get yeah. royalties for it so I'm a bit pissed off yeah do you? yeah so um the first movie, I think the first movie was the best, and that's safe to say. There's three of these, isn't there? In fact, I'm just going to get my tablet just so I can get some details. Uh, some because uh, I can never remember what years these movies came out. But the the first one is kind of um, I suppose they're all cult movies, but the first one in particular is has got like a big sort of cult following. Uh, the other two seem to be a bit more sort of forgotten about. Um, they're not as good. But they're still decent enough. I mean, we, we watched all three, didn't we? We enjoyed them. I mean, this was the first time I'd actually seen the first one because I think they just had like two and three in the video shop, but not one. <laughs> so it's like, that's why I'd never seen the first one. Yeah, because um, the second and third one are kind of like, um, they don't necessarily, I mean, they follow on, but they're not like back to back, are they? They've kind of got, two separate kind of stories to them um I mean, episode two and the first one kind of do follow on very closely from one another but yeah. yeah the third one to me just does feel kind of like tagged on it does technically start from like where the last one ended with like cordell's hand going through the uh like coffin but it's like thematically it's all over the damn place but we'll get to that when we talk about the third one yeah. So the first one, I'm just getting IMDB up, uh, just so I'm making sure I get my details right. So it was made in 1988. And from what I understand, because I've not actually seen this movie, there's a film called Maniac. And I think that's, that's another cult one. I think that had a, an actual 4K release recently. And that was one that, um, uh, what was his name? Tom Savini, the like, makeup guy. Uh, the horror makeup guy. Uh, he was in the movie. And it was one of his early films as well. And uh, there's like a particularly nasty bit in this film called Maniac, which was directed by William Lustig. And uh, there's like a really nasty bit in that film where Tom Savini gets shot with a shotgun through a windscreen. His head like kind of explodes. 
very kind of dawn of the dead like because he obviously worked on that and was in that as well so um yeah it looks very like i haven't seen maniac it looks very kind of bloody and gory but uh the guy that was in that the the maniac um the actor that played him was supposed to be uh, the the maniac guy out of um, Maniac Cop. Um, he was called Joe Spinell. And I mean, I loved him in Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, that's the guy that actually played Maniac Cop. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a sec. But yeah, Joe Spinell. Anyway, he was the original guy that would have been the Maniac Cop actor. He was in Maniac. Um, you might not know him by name, but he's been in loads of stuff. If you saw him, you'd be like, oh, him. He was in Rocky. He was Rocky's boss in the first film where he was a lone shark guy. Um, and uh, he was in Taxi Driver at the beginning, the bit where uh, Robert De Niro goes to get a job. And he's been asked a lot of questions in the first scene of the film Taxi Driver. Uh, he was also in The Godfather. He was one of the like, hitman guys in The Godfather 1 and 2. He's been in loads of stuff. But I think he died. And he was originally going to be in Maniac Cop. And so, like you say, they got um, a different actor. It was the guy from, uh, well, I know him from Tango and Cash, the Maniac um, Cop. It was Robert Zarr. And uh, what was the, he had a condition, didn't he? What the hell? I'll have to look, look up what it was say, called. He does look very much like, almost like he's had a failed plastic surgery to me. It's like a really weird cafe. Yeah. Yeah, he, had a, he was called cherubism. It's a genetic disorder which causes excessive bone growth in the lower face. Lower face? Lower face. So uh, I'll just get a picture of him up. This guy. So it's funny because in the, the second and third film, they just basically put that much makeup on him and, like, masks and stuff to make him look all gory. You could have got anybody to do that. It's just they should have left him the way he is because he kind of brought some. I'm not saying he looks ugly or anything, but he as a villain with with kind of unique look to him. Um, I think that was what made the first film really great. Yeah. Also, it's like the first film. It's like, hang on, you're mistaking this guy for Bruce Campbell. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I know well, they've both got chins, but there, there are chins, and then there are chins. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because in the first film, it's a, it's a Bruce Campbell film, so if you're, like, a big fan of his, I mean, I've um, I've been a fan of his, but I've not, like, watched every film that he's done, and this is one I only saw for the first time about two years ago. Um, you haven't even seen it till this year, had you, really? You've only seen the yeah. two and th- Um Not for the lack of availability of the movie, either. I mean, you've always been able to get it. Arrow did a good Blu-ray of it. I'll just show you the cover. I don't know which side it's going to be on. But... Um, but yeah, Arrow did a release of this. You get loads of extra features. It's based on a 2K restoration uh, with the original theatrical cut. Um, I don't know enough to get into the details about different cuts and so on, but it's because this is the only one that I've seen, so I won't go down that route. But yeah, uh, it's quite decent. It's got a few people you'd probably recognise if you've watched other films that we've been talking about. So as well as Bruce Campbell, it's got, uh, what's his name? Uh, Thrill Me Guy. Tom Hopkins, yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about him last year because he was in Night of the Creeps, wasn't he? Well, exactly. Then, hence the uh, the thrill me line, which was a yeah. kind of like tagline from that. Yeah, because I think he introduces this film on the Blu-ray, doesn't he? And there's an introduction from him, and he says "thrill me," and it's like, no, that's the wrong film, but we get it. Yeah, yeah like, he's been in loads. He was in a few John Carpenter films. He was in like Halloween three for better or for worse. I was just gonna say I don't think they could have started with you know him going stop it, stop it. <laughs> I don't think yeah. that would have worked as well. Yeah, and he was in the Fog, and he was in Escape from New York. He's in Lethal Weapon as well, wasn't he? He was a guy that was friends with Danny Glover. Uh, his daughter kills himself at the big, be- kills herself at the beginning of Lethal Weapon. So yeah, you, you get what I mean, anyway. Um, yeah, it kind of um, follows, like, a couple of, like, cops who are, like, having an affair and this guy who's, like, investigating the case. And, like I say, Bruce Campbell's kind of implicated as, like, the maniac cop. But it's actually this guy called Cordell, so me. And you never know if he's actually um, supernatural or not, or if he's just, like, really hard and, like, 
you know, keeps getting shot, but it's like he hasn't we haven't seen him like set on fire and like survive it or anything at this point. So there's room to think like, well, maybe he's not actually supernatural and maybe he didn't actually die. Maybe he's just like just defies science kind of thing. I mean, obviously being supernatural defies science, but like um in a yeah, more ground in the first one is he supposed to be kind of brain damaged and like hideously scarred from like an assault he went through in the prison yeah that's it there's it, it kind of does lean more towards it not being supernatural doesn't it because if he was just michael myers then they would just say that he needs to kind of go to efforts to say well actually he didn't die he was just really fucked up so yeah, i think the um the like supernatural angle more comes in from like what the female like uh, cop says because he basically like tries to kill her at one point because i mean at this point he's trying to like frame um bruce campbell, bruce campbell. so again you know that's not exactly what we expect like a supernatural michael myers character to do like try and frame like somebody else for his crime so he don't get like the cops after him yeah it's a bit savvy is that, isn't it? for uh, uh, yeah he basically try, tries to murder this like female um detective and when he's like strangling her, she's like, you know, his hands were like cold as death and so forth, and like his grip was like impossibly strong and all this. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of like shoot him multiple times, but like, is he just wearing like a bulletproof vest or something? Or yeah. But yeah, this movie also got Richard Roundtree as well, and it's Shaft. Is he like the commissioner or something? The police commissioner. Yeah. So a lot of this is about like police corruption and stuff. So the maniac cop is like going after cops more than anything. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's like a theme of that throughout these movies, isn't there? Um, yeah, yeah Tom there's always like some like corrupt cop who doesn't want to admit like what happened. Yeah. So yeah, pretty good film anyway. And at the end of the film, uh, he's in like a police van and they go over like a, like a pier out there and they go over the edge into the, into the river. And uh, right at the end, you see Maniac Cop Cordell's hand come out of the water and the credits roll kind of thing. Yeah, it's a very um, slasher movie at this point. Like, could be supernatural, could just be a crazy killer. Like, it's not clear either way. Yeah. So that's the first one. Anyway, we'll move on to the second one now. Bruce Campbell is in the second one. But they kill him yeah, off. Fairly. Just, just, just to explain this to people, so you don't get pissed off like I did when I watched this. It was like, oh, cool. I'm pretty young. I've just watched Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell's awesome. This film's got Bruce Campbell in. That's gonna be fucking awesome. He's in it for like two fucking minutes. Seriously. Well, there's a bit of a backstory. He was in a bit of a rough place when he made this. He was getting like divorced or something. Yeah, apparently, um, like it's it's a really bad idea to bring it up to him. <laughs> Um, like yeah. conventions and stuff because he gets like really snarky although a lot of people like him being really snarky so they do it deliberately yeah so if you're going to be in tr- insulted by somebody it might as well be bruce campbell yeah so uh the second one i had to get two and three imported um actually no i'll tell a lie um the second one i got on dvd and um because it's an 18 certificate, so it's BBFC. That means it's British, a British version. Um, so the second one, it kind of ditches Bruce Campbell. And for the second and third one, it's Robert Darvey, um, who you might recognise. He was uh, Sanchez, the villain in Licence to Kill. He was in, like, The Goonies. He's been in loads of... He was in Raw Deal as well. He was kind of like a Weasley sort of uh, bad guy in that. Um but yeah, he's been in loads of stuff, Robert Darby. He's a good actor as well. Um, he's still doing stuff. He's like 70 now. He's, in fact, he's exactly to the day 30 years older than me. Um, bit of trivia for you there. So, um, yes, he's the main guy in, in, in these, in two and three, isn't he? So it's, it's pretty good, if, even if um, kind of lamenting the loss of Bruce Campbell in this franchise, don't worry too much, because Robert Darby was... He was pretty cool in it. Would you agree? Yeah, it's kind of it is kind of weird though that basically like the first half of this film is Cordell getting his 
like revenge on the guys who like beat him in the first one, like the two um, cops. Because um, what's his face? Um, the other guy was already like dead before the end of the um, first film. Like um, Cordell throws him out a window. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of continued on with like completely different characters, similar to Predator 2, I suppose, where you've got like this really strong like movie, the first movie, and it, it's not continued as such. Although actually Robert Darby was actually in Predator 2 as well, br- uh, briefly. Uh, uh, like I said, they basically got completely new cast in this one, as yeah. uh, both the original cops die, and instead it's um, like a detective who's kind of got like a bad reputation. He's a bit of like a bad cop himself. And yeah. um, this like police psychologist who's, um, I didn't know the the actress in the first one, but uh, this one's Claudia Christensen. Something like that. Claudia, something like that. Basically she was um, in Babylon 5. Non-name remembering Murphy. Well, you were close, Claudia Christian. I, I only know this because I, I can't be smug. <laughs> I was close. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't uh, she? But yeah, there was a bit of like controversy over that because apparently she was like pregnant during filming and didn't know and she lost the kid because of like one scene where she's getting dragged through like a car window. Yeah, is that true? I didn't know uh, According to what I was looking up on it, yeah. yeah I don't know. I think um, either she didn't know or she did know, but she hadn't told like the guys who were doing the film. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, she in, she was in Babylon Five, wasn't she? Yeah, she's um, Ivanova, which is what I'm more know her as. Yeah, because I never Pretty watched. Good actress. Um, yeah, it's a kind of shame she doesn't return for the third one. She's only in the second. Yeah. Yeah, because the the third one. We'll just move on because we're running out of time. But um, the third. Like I said, just just one last thing on the second one before we move on. Yeah. I would yeah. say if you need to watch them, I'd just watch the first and the second because they do kind of follow on directly from one another. And honestly, it brings it to a fairly good conclusion with like the corrupt cops made to admit what they did to Cordell and so forth. So it's kind of like a very much like, OK, we've ended it. There's a line under it now. Why are we bringing this back again? Uh, but yeah, the third film. <laughs> yeah, I tend to agree. I mean, the third one's OK. Um, it's not a bad film, but I think if you were gonna just watch like, if you're not, we're not gonna watch all three of them, just the first two were all right. Um, I think they're kind of progressively going downhill. But um, I don't know this for a fact because I haven't like read any sources on this. But so the third one, it makes me think like they had one idea and then decided, oh no, this idea isn't working. So what if we put this other idea in as well? Because it's very kind of disjointed i mean like in the second one it's like yeah proving like that cordell was like a good cop who got like set up by corrupt bastards and putting him to rest you know once and for all in like the third one it's like yep there's this voodoo guy who brings him back to life to like clean up the city but there's also a plot where he's like got a crush on this female like badass cop who got herself like shot and's on life support it's like how do these two things fucking intersect? Yeah, I know what you mean. There is one good aspect that I know I kept making a point of this in the third film where it's got Robert Darby who played a Bond villain, but it's also got Julius Harris who played Teehee in Live and Let Die. He was the guy with the uh, the hook like for his hand, the one that Roger Moore throws out of the train window at the end of the film. Uh, both of them are in it, both Bond villains. And I think at one point, Julius Harris says to Robert Darby something like, I've been expecting you. So it's like from one Bond villain to another saying a classic Bond villain line, which I think has only ever been said in like one Bond film from memory. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, nice little Easter egg. Maybe, maybe deliberate, maybe accidental. Either way, it's cool. Yeah. Now, I had to get this on... Well, I could have done it with the second one as well. I got, I managed to get like a fairly cheap like a DVD of the second one, but it was quite expensive on DVD. And it wasn't that much more expensive to get the third one on Blu-ray. So that's why the second one I got on there, and it was an imported one. Um, I think it's like Spanish or something, but it plays perfectly well. No forced subtitles. Language is, is pretty easy to uh, to select in English. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, it took a couple of minutes. Like, wait, well, all right, yeah, 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 we figured it out now. Yeah. Now this one is. It if is, we can figure it out, fucking anybody can. Yeah. Well, yeah. But this one, it isn't just Maniac Cop Three. It's also Maniac Cop Three Badge of Silence. So, um, yeah, like I say, with this, you can kind of see from the artwork what they did to him. They've like. He's unrecognisable pretty much as the original actor, but he is the original actor, so... Um, kind of reminded me a bit of what they did with um, Jason Voorhees in um, Friday the 13th, when you actually do see his face, he's all mangled up. It was basically just a similar thing as that. So it wasn't anything like that we haven't seen before. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense because he has been like stabbed, shot, burned, blown up, like fucking everything by this point. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you haven't had a shower, and therefore you couldn't appear on camera. So how the oh, hell? Exactly. Is... Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be like shit in hell. They've got like, um, what's his face? Like Adam's uh, thingy Zadar, whatever his name is. Yeah. And he's fucking dead. That's like, how bad I look. Jesus. Exactly. So yeah, we'll wrap this up because we're coming up on twenty minutes. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty good trilogy to watch if you just like sort of eighties, nineties horror films, um, suspense thriller thrown in as well. I suppose. I mean, there has been some vague mentions of possibly a reboot, but then again, there's vaguely possibly reboots of fucking everything. So I won't yeah. put any real like credence to that unless something actually more solid gets announced. Yeah. So I think Larry Cohen might have been, he was a writer, I think he might have been working on it like a while ago, possibly, I'd heard that, but he passed away a couple of years ago, so I think even mm-hmm. that's, that might have slowed it down, well, might have put an end to it, to be honest. But yeah, I like these, I'd watch them again, it was just like I say, you've got to have low expectations with movies like this to actually enjoy them. So it sounds like we've been kind of like uh, ripping into these films, but um, we watched them at a good time, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, like I say, the only one I'd really, like, kind of caution people against a bit is the third one. And even then, it's like, this is not, like, unwatchable or anything by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there anyway. So we'll be back tomorrow and every other night leading up to Halloween night itself on the channel. So um, we've got a few ideas what we're going to talk about, so I won't announce it here. But, um, yeah, the next video should be up tomorrow night. So if you want to check back. Uh, for our next reviews. Thank you.